Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. This is Politics Today live on Channel's television. I'm Sean Wakimaloye in Abuja. Within the next one hour, we'll try to, as much as possible, bring you up to speed with what is happening and the latest in the nation in terms of politics and the state of governance in Nigeria. But we we'll begin tonight with what has become a critical uh, decision by the Nigerian Labour. Today, after a meeting of the Joint National Executive Council of the Nigerian Labour Congress and the Trade Union Congress, the, all, all the workers in Nigeria have now been directed by their leadership to withdraw their services effective 12 midnight today, 13 November 2023. Consequently, this means that all affiliates and state councils of the NLC and TUC are now directed to issue circulars for maximum compliance, and these circulars have been made available to the National Secretariat or posted to the NEC and CWC WhatsApp platforms, which then means that workers will now begin a nationwide strike. They review these at a press conference and in a circular that has since been uh, transmitted to their members across the nation. Instead of government to speak and stand on the side of justice and on the side of truth. Some people in government, they were running their mouth and making all kinds of statements. So the two labor center has resolved to stand firmly by the decision of the joint neck that was held last week, Tuesday, that effective Zero, zero, or zero, zero, one hours on the 14th of November, we shall declare a nationwide strike. So effective tomorrow or midnight today, a nationwide strike is going to um, commence all affiliates of Trade Union Congress of Nigeria, all affiliates of uh, Nigeria Labor Congress, all state councils of the two centers have been mobilized adequately. And this is going to be indefinite. This is a very critical one, and we're wondering how the government will react to this, which then means that workers across the nation we're now done to so see how that this pans out. Well, we'll be getting reactions of Governor Doye Diri after he was declared winner in the by us governorship election, which was outstanding up until this afternoon when the result was being announced. We'll be getting some reaction and see what is happening in the, the camp of the PDP in Bayelsa State. And of course, we'll be getting a major reaction from Kogi State. This time around, it's coming with some evidence. What could this be? So stick with me for some exclusive tonight on the program. But first and foremost, let's check out some of your uh, political roundup stories. The House of Representatives has issued a 48-hour ultimatum to the Industrial Training Fund. ITF to give an explanation on missing funds of up to 3 billion naira. The chairman of the House Committee on Finance, Honorable James Faleke, gave the ultimatum during the continued hearing on the Medium Term Expenditure Framework, MTEF, and Fiscal Strategy Paper, FSP, when the agency was unable to explain how the funds were utilized. Similarly, the committee directed the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission to explain within 72 hours why a company was licensed to provide meters. The company is said to have received 39 billion naira from the Ministry of Power but still did not provide the meters. The Kogi State Governorship candidate for the Action Alliance, Mr. Olayin Kabraimo, has rejected the results of the Saturday governorship election in the state and asked the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to conduct a fresh election. Mr. Braimo told journalists at a news conference in Abuja that his votes were not counted in many of the polling units just as the exercise was also characterized by violence, vote buying, and other electoral misconduct. We are not going to allow this result to stand if INEC will not cancel this election and order for fresh polls across the entire state. 
we will proceed to ask for redress in the court of law. The governor of Imo State, Senator Hopos Odimma, says his administration will continue to provide transparent leadership to the people of Imo State in order to deliver on his promises to the citizens of the state. Governor Oz Odimma, who was speaking during a state broadcast, notes that he's aware of the expectations of the people of the state and is determined to provide the leadership needed to meet their demands. He also called on his opponents to join hands with him to move the state forward. It is an invitation to do more and to do better. And that is exactly what I will do. The governor of Nasarawa State, Mr. Abdullahi Sule, has convened an expanded security meeting to address the prevailing challenges in the state. Those present at the meeting are leaders of security agencies, traditional rulers, heads of tertiary institutions, and other participants in the state security gathering. In his opening remarks, the governor disclosed that the state government is reintroducing the deployment of vigilantes and various community groups under the guidance of traditional rulers to enhance security particularly at the grassroots level. The Minister of State for Police Affairs, Mrs. Iman Suleiman Ibrahim, has announced the federal government's plan to commence the withdrawal of police personnel from VIP security duties. Speaking in Abuja at a two-day retreat for the Directorate Cadre of the Ministry, the minister highlights the key mandates of the ministry, which includes developing and implementing a harmonized police reform report, amending the Police Act, and executing President Tinubu's directive on the withdrawal of personnel from VIPs among others. Thank you so much. And there you have it. You've been sent <clears throat> with your political roundup stories. Let's get to it. I'll take you first and foremost to Bias State. You remember that yesterday, um, the election in Kogi State was finalized and announced and the winner was announced Usman Ododo of the APC was announced. But of course, this was how happened today. I'd like you to listen to uh, uh, some of what really happened uh, in the collation center between the a court party agent and that of the APC. was a heated uh, conversation there when uh, comments were going to be made by the different political uh, party agents at the coalition center. And this was before the announcement by the chief returning officer in Bayelsa State who announced Joye Diri of the People's Democratic Party as a winner in the Bayelsa governorship election race. Take a listen. And this is how the chief returning officer in Bayelsa State made the announcement earlier today. of APC has 110,108 votes. Subiri Wabode Joseph of Abga has 70 votes. Eradiri Udenogafa of LP has 905 votes. Azebi Bestman Ayabeke of NNPP has 17 votes. Diri Doye of PDP has 175,196 votes. Ozato Eripadi of PRP has 69 votes. Osunuku Binayefa of SDP has 45 votes. Simeon Imotemi 
Kapioru of ZLP has 21 votes. That Diri Doe of PDP, having satisfied the requirements of the loan, is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected. And that was how Doye Diri of the PDP was declared winner. Of course, immediately after that happened, uh, some governors of the PDP are being on the ground in solidarity with Governor Doye Diri to, uh, to celebrate with him. Of course, the atmosphere was thrown into some jubilation in Yaragua, uh, the Bayelsa State Capital, in the camp of the People's Democratic Party, as soon as the result was declared and Doye Diri was returned and announced the winner in the governorship election, of course. The excited Governor Diri, who is now gotten um, a nod for a re-election and declared winner, and gotten assurance to return to the government house in Bayanagua, uh, gets his reaction to the outcome of the post. Take a listen to him. This victory would not have been possible without the mighty hand and grace of the Almighty God and the overwhelming support you have shown towards me, my Deputy Governor, and indeed the Prosperity Government. I am deeply humbled by your overwhelming expression of confidence by your mandate to serve you for another four years. I want to express my heartfelt appreciation to everyone who cast your vote in my favor and in our favor and has entrusted me with the responsibility of leading our beloved state again. All right, then, Doye Diri, Governor of Bayasa State and the candidate of the People's Democratic Party. Let's leave Bayasa State for a moment. Let me take you to Kogi State. Of course, immediately after Usman Ododo was announced yesterday as the winner in the election, uh, Governor Yaya Bello and uh, uh, the uh, winner, APC's candidate Usman Ododo, have been reacting to this. Of course, we were getting some reactions to uh, what INEC announced. But let me allow you to listen to what well, both men had to say after Usman Ododo of the APC was declared winner. I am winding down as the executive governor of Kogisi to the glory of God. I appreciate the leader of my party and our own party, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu who have sacrificed for democracy and continue to sacrifice for democracy for this great country I pledge to serve and to lead with accountability prosperity and inclusivity therefore, <laughs> therefore I call on you all especially my brothers the co-contestants to come and join me to discuss the appeal of our dear state for greatness after all. We don't have any other state that we can call our state except for this. Those are some of the reactions from yesterday, late in the night yesterday. But well, let's get some reactions. There is an olive branch being extended to other candidates in the race by Usman Ododo. But what does this mean? What does this victory mean? What uh, the outcome of that election? What is it? We've been hearing from the candidate in Kogi State tonight. I'm being joined by the candidate of the People's Democratic Party in that race, Senator Dino Malaye, joins us live here in our studio. Thanks so much, uh, Senator Malaye, for joining us tonight. Yeah, good evening, Shio, and yeah. um, good evening, Nigerians. Uh, Usman Ododo there, extending an olive branch to you to join him to discuss the progress of Kogi State. Would you be accepting that and uh, for the interest of your state? Darkness and lights don't concur. 
So uh, there's no relationship. So you won't be taking you won't be taking that olive branch. Darkness and light don't concur. I repeat. No, no, I'm, that's a parable. It's not a parable. Meaning we are on parallel lines. We have no meeting points. You never work with them. I don't work with darkness. That's Usman Ododo. I operate in the light. Usman Ododo, I mean... The APC, Usman Ododo, Yaya Bilo, I don't relate with darkness. All right. I mean, I guess you understand better what you, what you mean. But, but then you were not able to vote. You did not go out there on election day to vote. It's not this... this um, sitting... Is it about whether I voted or not? Or no, no, I'm just asking you. No, no, we are, we're talking, we're the going to talk about the election the, and your reaction the, to the, it. The issue of voting or not voting, understand, have no legal status. People win elections from prisons. So if we want to go into the discussions about this election, the processes, the conclusions, sort of buying time to discuss issues that have no relevance to the election. I'm asking you. Legally, to... have no relevance to the election. So you don't think so there is an explanation to you not going out to vote? Whether I voted or not, I've just said it's immaterial because there's no legal status. Whether you voted or not, I said people who were even in prison win elections from prison. So it's better we, talk about, we talk about we talk about we're not in prison. We talk, it's good we talk about the processes of the. You don't election, want to tell your followers why you should not vote. I'm just I'm still telling you that that is completely immaterial to this. Program. You don't want to comment about it. I don't want to talk about it. Yes. Is there a reason why? I don't want to talk about it, and I have the right to say so. All right. But that's what I mean. It's up to you. Thank you. Well, let's talk about your reaction to this election. What do you make of it? You've been saying that you have your grievances about this election. What exactly is it? To start with, there was no election. To start, what we saw on Saturday? There was no election, and I'm going to prove it here. There was only allocation of votes by INEC. The election is, uh, is, is shameful. And I sympathize with this country. I sympathize with the citizens of Kogi State. And it's a big, big shame that Mahmoud Yakubu, who have children and um, the school travelers, will manifest the kind of satanism that took place in Kogi State yesterday. As I speak with you, I am completely ashamed that. INEC had an opportunity to correct, to ameliorate, to palliate their mistakes, deliberate mistakes in the last presidential election. But instead, they have decided to compound the worries of Nigerians over our democratic process. What we saw yesterday was not democracy. Mahmoud Yakubu is the bane of democratic development in this country. He is a major problem to our democracy. And he has proven again that he's not capable of being um, a repentant soul. Is, this because, as, as, is it because, Senator, that you lost this election that you're speaking not a, in this manner? This, this is not the first time I'm losing elections. And I've never come out to make complaints like this. If I lose honorably, if I lose in a free, fair, and credible election, I will congratulate the winner. So this was not uh, credible as far as you're concerned? It is not even close to credible. You, you, you put forward um, some, some, some document, uh, which will probably will allow you to speak to tonight, and perhaps you might be able to explain to Nigerians what you meant by the fact that this election was not free and fair. For those who think that uh, they voted in the election, but they did not vote anyway, for let me, you. So we, that perhaps they will say, oh, maybe start. Dino is not... Um, uh, is not uh, uh, he's not a good sportsman. That's why you're saying It no. is not about being a good sportsman or not. It's about integrity. It is about the credibility of the referee. It's about the credibility of Einek and Mahmoud Yakubu. Let's break it down. Let me, let, me, let me come down to you. In 2019, the Abelo wrote results in Okene local government to the tune of 112,000 to the APC and less than 1,000 for the PDP. But when Beavers operated in the February election, where we voted for the National Assembly and presidential elections, in Okene local government, APC had 20,000 votes, and the PDP had 12,000 votes. So in Okene local government, total vote cast was less than 40,000. This year, February, and in the elections yesterday, Okene local government alone voted about 150,000, close to 150,000 
votes. Because, I mean, uh, the, 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 the governor <laughs> was awarded 141,538 votes. So you now imagine the same local government that produced less than 40,000 votes in February. The same local government now is producing close to 150,000 votes. Then go back and check. INEC is shameless. INEC is oozing. The RF yesterday showed the correct accredited voters. And, what we, is that? And, and we've downloaded all that already. We've downloaded it already. So you have? By, we downloaded yeah. it all yesterday. By today, they've started tampering with it. But what I have here is from the back end of INEC. And I challenge Mahmoud Yakubu and every staff of INEC to incorporate this document that I have. What do you have? On, 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 from Okene local government. Registered voters in the local government. I'm not talking of PVC collected. I'm talking of registered voters in that local government. It's 151,243. Then... That's for Okene local, local government. Then you have, for accredited voters, 73,150. Then you now have APC alone, scoring 141,538. When you have 73,150 accredited voters, then APC alone scoring 141,538. And if you look 141,538 to the registered voters, not, you must know that, she, mm. I'm not talking of PVC collected. I'm talking of registered voters. So if you have 151,248 registered voters and 141,000, that is over 90% of registered voters, not PVC collected. Even in the United States of America, that is the most civilized country in the world, this cannot happen. Then you come back to Adavi, where you have 114, 663 registered voters, and you have accredited voters of 55,115. Then you have APC um, scoring 103,172. You find out that this is more than double of the accredited uh, voters. And that is exactly what happened in almost every local government. And you have your own evidence yeah. uh, to back this up. I mean, very, very for, well for so. what really happened, because the result that was turned in and collated and the local government area, you were saying that it's, uh, it was inflated. Completely inflated. See, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There were over voting in 17 local governments, including my local government, the Jumu local government. Over voting in 17 local governments. I gave you this document, um, I'm shown. It's very clear. You can see it there. You can look at what is on, 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 the, on the screen right now. Yes. So you, you highlighted Adavi and Ajaukuta, for example. The, those are on top. So accreditation on the EC8. No, no, no. What, what you should look at is accreditation on from EC8A. You can see what it is. Then see what see, see the discrepancies with what you have in Beaver's accreditation. Just look at it. It's so clear, so open, so brazenly done, so shamelessly done, so ridiculously done. This is institutionalized and scientific rigging. So I have in, seen in, in Adavi, in Adavi. It was 88,000 on this end, but, yes. 20 of, uh, but those who originally, according to you, yeah. really, the real voters yeah. who went for accreditation as captured by the IRF yes. is 26,000. That is That's it. about for almost uh, 60,000 difference. Difference, that is it. And that is what happened in 17 local governments across the state. And INEC went ahead to declare these results. Remember yesterday when INEC made a press release they said there were discrepancies or reported discrepancies in five local governments and that they were investigating it. I next said they were investigating it. While you were investigating, you went ahead to declare those local governments. You made a video about uh, Ugori Magongo yes. and some other areas. So yes. INEC eventually said election. I, 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 INEC now said that they were investigating, they stated it in their press conference. They were investigating Okene, they were investigating Adavi, they were investigating Oguri Magongo, they were investigating Ajakuta, and they were investigating Okehi. While we were waiting for the report 
of INEC or the report of their investigation, they went ahead to declare these fictitious written results. You saw yesterday that a lot of coppers or, or pulling clerks or agents were all arrested with pre prefilled result sheets. A number of them yesterday. Oh, so, and you have, evidence of, them, you have evidence of that. Very well. And again, I also gave you some, res some result sheets mm -hmm. from original result sheets. Uh, maybe, maybe you can highlight, right. highlight, highlight maybe, some of them. Maybe the producers you will can see pull it how, You will see how mutilated the result sheets are. You will see where P a PDP votes were cancelled and, and reduced. This, this is an example of one. You know, PDP votes there cancelled and reduced while that of APC increased. I have about 10 of such results here. All of this is just an example, but I have more than 200 results, all this, mutilated like one, this. One of this is in Okei. This is, this uh, is LGA Okei School. Yes. I, Iru Bechi 2. Iru Bechi 2. Yeah. In so, Okei Local Government. There is another one from uh, Okei, LGA School, Iru Bechi 2. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Host of uh, okay, yes, there's a lot of okay. Yes, there's there. one, the Kina one there, you can see it. There are so many. Look at them. A PDP votes deliberately cancelled and reduced, and APC votes increased. And there are 72 polling units where I won elections in local, local government. At the point of announcement, they say there are no resource sheets. They say there are no resource sheets. Resource sheets now manifested at the collation center. Mahmoud Yakubu is having, he, he's got kids. He has no fear of God. He's the, he's the problem with our democracy. Do you think Mahmoud Yakubu has a direct hand in all of this? How will Yaya Bello and APC have access to original resource sheets without Mahmoud Yakubu's cooperation? How did a, a youth corps member who is engaged by INEC have one million naira in a, in a bag on the day of election? How did you get to know that? It's, the video is everywhere. I can send it to you right away. It's everywhere. We have never, I've never seen this type of fraud in my life. I've seen rigging. I've seen inflation of results. I've seen snatching of ballot papers. But what we saw in Kogi yesterday is legendary. It's shameful. Mahmoud Yakubu must cancel the election in Kogi State. Go and check the back end result. It is disgraceful. When you say it's back, embarrassing. When you say back end, yeah. you're meaning at the INEC At the server. INEC, yes. And you have the back end. I have it. How did you get it? That is left to me. I'm a private investigator. Certified private investigator. So you have all of this? That is what I've just so is I it, gave is, you a copy. Okay, that's what you have. That, yeah, that's, that's what, what we have on you. the screen that's right what, now. And I challenge Mahmoud, as we are speaking, to print a copy of their back end. If this so is, is it different what is on the IREV right now? They have, they've started changing it, but they, but they have been stupid because we already have, we already downloaded what was um, um, posted yesterday to today. We already have it full downloaded. The discrepancies are so glaringly or clear. It's there. You cannot even think about it. It's there. And how can I make promise Nigerians? We thought they will improve on their mess in February, but what they have done now is that they become more brazen. They become bolder. They are saying to hell. And these people have children. These people think they have a future, and they think there is no there is no God factor in the affairs of men. And a, a, a country that is supposed to be moving forward, completely this result. I I weep for this country. In fact, show there was a country. There was a country. It is painful, not because of me. For me, Dino Melaya, I am okay. For what I will eat and drink and train my children, God has provided to God be the glory. It's not about me, but it's about generations yet unborn. It's about doing the right thing in this country. It's about indoctrinating our children with right rudiments and right values. How will a child explain that on the same Arab porter, the, accredi the, the accreditation on paper is different from accreditation on the Arab? Where... Where on earth can you have 151,000 registered voters? I'm not saying PVC collected. And 97% and of, of people who registered, registered voters, voted. Nobody died. Nobody <laughs> in the whole country. If you get 35% uh, people voting from PVC collected, it's a good result. If you get 40%, it's a good result. But how can you explain that 
of PVC, not PVC collected, of registered voters voted in Okene, voted in Adavi, voted in Okehi. Your, 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 your assumption, uh, Senator Melaye, is that this is uh, uh, your allegations are, uh, uh, in respect of the fact that it may be a collusion between INEC and a political party. Is that, is it that what is you're not saying? an assumption, it is not an allegation. It's a statement of fact that I have proven to you with documents. No, but I have you... given you more than, more than 15 documents this evening. If you want to show Nigerians, let Nigerians see all the documents I've shown you. The last one I showed you, show Nigerians and let people see. The documents don't lie. Documents don't lie. And that's, see, look at, the kind of, look at the kind of results. Where, look, at the, look, at, look at the cancellation. Look at the correction. Is it look, the original the result that has been taken to for the collation? This is what we have on the RF. This is what was posted on the RF. This is the original results that we were given. Your party agents have... Oh, this, we have the all this, and it's not... You, you go yourself as you are sitting no, here, no, and somebody checking, to check it. Yeah, we're checking. They are the ones there. And it is on this mutilated results, on this cancellated result, that the, uh, the, the, the stooge of Yaya Belo was declared. It is based on this fraud that it was declared. And INEC is aware. INEC knew that five local governments... Results were written before the election. Have you, and that spread is not only to those five local governments. Have, it's across the state. 17 local governments in Kogi State have over, over voting. 17. Senator Melaye, have you officially communicated this grievance we to have, INEC? We have submitted our petition to INEC with evidence this afternoon. So what is your next line of action? Our next line of action is that INEC have seven days to review petitions. So we are waiting to see what they will do. But this one, we will see the end of it. This, we must, as in an unjust society, silence is a crime. Within the confines of law, we will make sure that writing is done. Nigeria is not a banana republic. Nigeria is not a state where APC is Lord Alpha and Omega. No! The government is not owned by those in government. Government is owned by the people. Democracy will continue to be government of the people, by the people and for the people. It will never one day become gridocracy as APC is trying to do. Gridocracy is government of the greedy, by the greedy and for the greedy. We will not allow it. Nigerians must rise up and stop this fraud. How can, why, why can't we organize a decent election? If you win, you are satisfied in your conscience that you won. How can you be carrying an illegitimate mandate and you are comfortable so and you, you are happy? You imagine, because uh, PDP candidate in Bayasa won the election. So uh, do you think that all of this process was all about Kogi and the only uh, that only My brother, happened? I am not in Bayasa. I was not in Bayasa. I cannot comment on Bayasa. I was in Kogi and I saw what happened in Kogi. I don't have the celestial powers to be in two places at the same time. I am talking about Kogi State, where I was. I have I've also discussed with my agents. I've shown you documented evidence of mutilations, cancellations, suppression of votes. The, a meeting held, and they said, Dino Melaye must not come second. Because if he comes second, it's dangerous. He can knock this guy off. So he must become a distant third. There was no election. There was only allocation of votes. So on the votes were allocated. On the Muri Ajaka should not be excited that he won one or two, three local governments in the East. It was allocated. The same thing happened in February election, where Lagos was given to Labour. Labour should not think they won Lagos. It was deliberate. The mathematics was done. The arithmetic was done. Kwankwaso was given Kanu, knowing fully well that other states have been padded. That is exactly the same formula that was used in Kogi State. So, and 17 local governments over voting. What INEC ought to have done, let Mahmoud Yakub swear by the, the Holy Quran that there was no report by the field officers for cancellation in, in this local government. Senator Malaya, we need to leave it at this, and uh, we're hoping that whatever your um, uh, efforts in pushing this legally within the confines of the law, do let us know. Thank you so much indeed. Thank you very and much. I and I wish you the very best. God bless you. Thank man. you so much indeed. We take a break, everyone. And when we return, we take a holistic view of the election of Saturday. What really happened? And the lessons for Nigeria, if... We as a people need to move forward. We need to learn our lessons from what we have done in the past. We'll be right back after this break. Come on. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Some of the results as announced by INEC will begin.
from Bayelsa State, where INEC has announced that Doye Diri of the PDP is a matched winner with 175,196 votes to defeat its closest rival of the APC, Timi Pre Siva, who is said to have polled 110,108 votes. Uh, well, of course, the top two candidates are polled uh, 285,304, and total valid votes is 287,554. If you go to Kogi State, um, the candidate of the APC, Uzman Ododo, polled 446,237 votes, Y is closest rival of the AZP. Muritala Ajaka hold 259,052 votes. And uh, PDP's uh, Dino Melaye hold 46,362 votes out of a total valid vote of 782,289 votes. Of course, uh, um, in uh, Imo State, uh, APC's Hope Uzodema hold 540,308 votes, while Nathan Achonu of the Labour Party polled 64,081 votes, and uh, PDP's uh, Sam Ayan who polled 71,503 votes. So that's how it is for the votes. But then what about the lessons to be taken away from this exercise? Is there anything on the positive that we can take from this, uh, uh, these two, three elections in Bayasa, Imo, and Kogisi. Don't forget, elections in Ondo and Edo will happen next year. And the jostle for those two elections will begin sometimes in late January or mid of January. But let's speak to one of those who have been monitoring and observing these. You heard what Senator Dino Melai said. Look, how can we improve our elections? And what are the issues that have come up from this election? Dr. Hussein Abdul, who joins us, is a right activist and a chair of the board of Yaga Africa, one of a major civil society organization who deployed observers to this election. He joins us virtually. Thank you so much, Dr. Abdul, for joining us tonight. Thank you, Sean. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, give us your own view about these three elections. Now, Bayelsa has been called, uh, winner has been returned, and result declared. Uh, how do you think, we we'll start with INEC, what is your assessment of INEC's outing this time around? Yeah, um, I, 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 I think um, we spend so much time assessing INEC and we are very right to do so uh, because that is the only constitutional body responsible for elections. And each time we go out on situations like this, we like to assess to see how well INEC performed Comparatively speaking, and knowing where we are coming from from the general elections, I actually think, or we think that in terms of INEX logistics, there have been significant improvement on these elections than all the previous ones that we've had in recent time. We think uh, the electoral technology that we deployed all worked um, to a very significant extent. The, the beavers did work uh, in, in the state that we monitored in nothing less than 95% of the sample polling, polling unit, we saw beavers did um, quite work. Uh, we see IRF also work. So, so most of those institutional structures and processes, we've seen significant improvement, uh, of course, in that regard. But again, there are other things that we struggled with. Uh, at least uh, for the first time openly, we are seeing cases of preferred um, elections result, uh, which was reported. Um, some of them swiftly, um, uh, swiftly dealt with. We also saw um, saw cases of beavers not working in a few polling polling units. For some of them, it was quickly addressed, technical glitch, quickly addressed, and they were back on streams. And then there were also a few polling units where the beavers were bypassed and where accreditations were done without following. But we also know what the law says in such situation that it's as good that the election did not take place because. Uh, accreditation is mandatorily done uh, via via beavers. So in terms of those operational logistics and some of those historical challenges that we've often struggled with with ANIC, there has been significant improvement this time around. What about the politicians? What about their conduct? Because like you said, the attention is usually on INEC, but well, <laughs> INEC is not the only factor involved in all of this. 
in all of those issues that are being raised, ANEC, if accused of rigging the election, cannot rig the election all by itself. ANEC is not up against the contest against any political party. It's up in the middle and caught in the web of all accusations back and forth by the politicians. How do you think that the politicians are able to conduct themselves this time around? You know, I have always argued that um, INEC, uh, the performance of INEC is a necessary condition for a credible elections, but it's not a sufficient condition uh, for that. So it is necessary, but it can, it's not sufficient. I think the attitude of our politicians has been a major, major issue, even in these in this particular elections. The, the, the intensity of the elections was totally unwarranted. But it has to do with the character of our politicians, the messages they were passing, the way they were driving the electionary processes, the plans that they all have either to outdo each other in the process of circumventing some of the laws that have been instituted to guide and ensure we have credible elections. So when somebody goes out, for instance, to snatch ballot, ballot boxes, it's a very clear thing. It's not a ballot box snatching of the old days where you snatch and stuff. But you don't, this one, if you snatch ballot paper, it's as good that you didn't have an election in that place. Or somebody working hard to, 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 to ensure that there was overvoting in the polling unit, because you are very sure that when there is overvoting, the result of that polling unit will be cancelled. The desperations to ensure that you have a prefilled electoral result, uh, even before the vote actually started, the whole use of violence to suppress, to suppress votes and ensure people don't come out, or spreading rumor about relocation of polling units and, and people are not able to find where they're actually supposed to vote. Or like in some of the cases we found in Imo where where um, there wasn't elections in those polling units. They, they, they happened to fall into our sample polling unit, but they were a result of those um, elections actually put on the IRF. It actually shows the level of desperation that our politicians have shown. And I think, for me, it's a big worry for our democracy. We cannot run a democracy without Democrats. And the characters we are dealing with as politicians in this country have no iota of democratic values. They don't believe in it. They see it as a distraction. It is only suit to them when they are actually in control. And this is a big problem if we don't address it. There are fundamental value issues. They are not things that you can simply legislate on and order. Yes, we can deal with the culture of impunity where people do things and get away with it. We try to deal with those things. But again, we need to work really hard in terms of imbibing the right values that drive democracy. Democracy is not simply about elections. It's not about elections. It's not just about having been in the parliament. It's, not, it, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a cultural thing. You, you, you have to develop that culture of democratic practice. So if you don't have it, you cannot have a democracy. And this is our biggest challenge. But do you think that perhaps in some ways uh, that politicians who are more desperate in these three of cycle elections, more than what we experience in the the 2023 general elections? I think they were. I think there was extreme desperation for it because the election came with extreme, with a lot of intensity. I think for those who haven't been um, observing elections, you may probably not notice the level of intensity in Bayersa or in Imo and, and in Kogi. It was, it, it, the, the, the whole thing in those days, it was like, you are having another uh, general elections. But I think what happened during the general elections, um, people's perceptions and understanding of Nigerian election has helped to calm things down in terms of saying, okay, um, this one will also come, it will also come and go. But the intensity was really, really very, um, uh, very high. And a lot of them actually are historical. Bayelsa also has a history of strong, intensive elections. We knew what happened during the last elections and and, and what the court interventions and how uh, uh, the, the party that won the elections actually has to leave you on the, on the eve of the shoring in. You, you know what happened in Imo. And, and, and in those kind of system, you always like to prove a point. And the cost of proving a point, you, 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 you tense up the polity. And at the end of the day, you discourage people from coming out to vote 
because the way it was looking is like, oh, it's going to be a very violent elections. It's going to, going to be massive uh, vote suppression, and people are discouraged from coming out to vote. So if you look at this, in all of it, I mean, I, I, I really uh, would have loved to delve into the area of security and uh, maybe an appraiser, uh, just a brief one of the performance of the security agencies in what, I mean, uh, those who I thought that uh, Kogisted would be a theater of war, considering what we have seen in the past. But how do you also appraise uh, the, the security uh, in terms of how they are able to hold things down and how they are able to curtail what could have been an excessive actions by politicians or thugs? Yeah, I, I think the security agencies did quite um, quite well. Uh, for some of us who observed this in, in our, some of our post, our pre-elections report and analysis did show the, the potential and possibility of violence, particularly in the state like Kogi, where uh, the, pre the last elections, um, the one before this particular one was also uh, quite intense, quite difficult, and there were a lot of violence. But I think the police institution acted decisively where they need to move a commission of police. They did move such thing and replace them where they were reported, they acted decisively. They made some considerable arrests, even in Kogi. In almost all the states, arrests were made. We hope those people arrested will be prosecuted so that at least we can we can begin to send a lesson or a message that we can't tolerate this culture of impunity. So I think with our own assessment, there have been significant improvement in terms of the security response to the situation, and their role actually played a, a very, very strategic role in ensuring that we're able to calm things down in some of the states. In wrapping this up, uh, Dr. Abdul, uh, just briefly, if you can tell us, if there is one positive to take out of these, these three uh, out-cycle elections, for INEC especially and for Nigerians, what would that be? I think it's improved logistics. Um, it's, INEC has improved uh, logistically. We also saw the election technology uh, worked. And, and that's very encouraging. We hope they can sustain it. Interesting. I hope so, too. Uh, but thank you so much indeed, Dr. Husseini Abdul, a right activist and uh, uh, the chair of the board of Yaga Africa, those who uh, send out observers for this election to monitor uh, what has been going. Of course, we get a lot of reactions to these elections and hoping that INEC might be able to at some point also get the views on how things went and the next line of action. Thank you so much indeed, Dr. Abdu, for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And that's Bye -bye. how we draw the curtains on the program tonight. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I'm sure I'll come I'll see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. God bless Nigeria. Bye-bye.